What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your man, Sports Nut, aka Akintune Day, aka the Negro Whisperer. And yeah, this um, there's a lot here. Tariq just dropped the video. It's time. Uh, we want to review it. We gonna get all the way into it. Listen, full disclosure, I thought it was a parody, like one of his puppets or something, like the puppet he got for Umar or the puppet he got for Tommy, but then I was watching, you know, YouTube last night and I, you know, Tommy did a video, did a um, show on it and I realized it was real. So then when I realized it was real, I started listening to it because I had initially dismissed it and I was like, oh, okay, it's time. And that, I mean, look, that little part right there is not too bad. It's time. But the musical arrangement and everything leaves a lot to be desired. But look, we'll get into this. And Dr. Umar, we'll get into Dr. Umar's response in a second, but let's, let's listen to the song first. Shout out to these brothers, we the gods. The one with no melanin. <laughs> Man, not a lot of melanin in that video. But listen, and the reason I'm saying that, look, I love the Light Skin Sisters, but I did a video the other day on my other channel about that Amanda Steinberg chick. I was defending her. I said she was she did the right thing. I applauded her for stepping aside and letting the sister get that um feature role in um Black Panther because she knew she would have got it. And a sister went and flagged my video and YouTube took my video down. They call, a sister called it hate speech because I said that the sister was right for doing what she did. Now we look at Mr. Melanin's video, we don't see no damn dark skin sisters in there. So let's see what the people have to say. And not to act like that's a Tariq thing, okay? That's not a Tariq thing. He just the worst melanin salesman ever. 
Like this nigga, he's selling oranges and he allergic to vitamin C. This person said, is this a joke? <laughs> this person said, no, it's not. Pro-blacks love drama. And this is where other person said, I thought it was a joke for clarity. <laughs> Hold on. Look at all the white supremacists in the video. <laughs> Listen. And Tariq said, if you didn't, he said, basically, if you didn't like this song, you was a coon. He said people that were coons was going to start hating on this song. So I guess, you know, listen, everything you do is cooning, and nothing they do is cooning. That's how pro-blacks are. Sound like a, a song Rick James wrote for Eddie Murphy back in 1983. <laughs> yeah, sure do. Sure do. And I bet y'all want to know what Dr. Umar said about this. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Let's go. So we got... Nothing. Okay, Dr. Umar don't have a problem with melanin. <laughs> he talking about Black Panther. And I think Dr. Umar is smart for not touching this. Because, listen, it, I didn't know this was a real song until Tommy, I thought, I literally thought that this was a parody. Like, I swear to you, I did not think this was a real song. I thought it was, like, just, like, you know, the puppets, like a joke thing. Even though it's time is in my head, it's time. So we don't have nothing from Dr. Uma. And Dr. Uma is doing the right thing by saying nothing. Because, listen, sometimes you let your enemies, you sit back and let them destroy themselves. And not saying this is leading to Tyreek's destruction, but it's just... Just weird, man. Not that he's doing music is weird, but that he's so. Dr. Umar ain't tweeted in a while. Let's see this one from that account. Let's see this one. Okay, yeah. Look. He's got a, an event coming up at the United Kingdom. He's promoting, talking about Ghana's 61st year of independence anniversary. Talking about South Africans reclaiming their land. Yeah, all this was before Tyreek. So uh, anything after that is before Tyreek. So Dr. Umar is just very, very, very solid. And you would think the nature, the ugliness of their beef, that he would have said something. But Dr. Umar may be learning. He's not a brilliant strategist at the 48 Laws of Power, but he's decent at the 48 Laws of Power. So he, must, he may be um, getting a little bit better because, you know, I literally, you literally don't have to say anything. This person says, well, damn, I had no idea he aimed to be like Dr. Dre in his world-class wrecking crew days. <laughs> Shaking my damn head. I would say don't quit your day job, but you ain't got one of those. This is beyond horrible. 
No, no. What the fuck, Tariq? <laughs> okay, the, the 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 guys who own this channel said Tariq is talented, brother, and stay working. Okay, let's see what people wrote back to them. <laughs> Somebody said you have a heart of gold for posting this. Very optimistic. <laughs> And look, moist funk disco. <laughs> oh, this person says it's damn good. The potential is there, but you need a couple writers, homie. Yeah, he needs some writers. The the lyrics were horrible, but we I I, I would assume he didn't write the lyrics, so I wouldn't hold that against him. And he's not a singer, so what were you expecting with the singer? Just to hold the note. And he's, you know, with all the auto tunes and things you got here, he did he did a decent job, you know, just staying in, in the tune. You know what I mean? Look, he better, did better than I could have did. That ain't saying shit, though. I'm more of a writer than a singer. This one says, bro, this shit is whack as fuck. Johnny Gill with his broken his jaw broken. <laughs> you know, this more reminds me of 80s than more 90s. You know, this is more 80s than 90s. This is like Gap Band when they was, you know, a lot of them groups, remember a lot of them groups from the 70s when the 80s came along, especially the mid 80s with the break beats and the hip hop and all that and the R&B started taking over for soul and the rhythm started getting faster and everything. And a lot of those groups from the 70s had to speed up their music to adjust to a newer audience it's like those groups that you know that had to make that that tried to stay relevant and had to make that change you know it it's more sounds like a a, a a hot group from the 70s struggling in the like 87 like um you know what this kind of reminds me of one of my favorite songs um rock steady Steady rocking all night long, and we begin to rock. Steady rock, rocking to the break of dawn. I looked at you, then my eyes, you were sick and tired of waiting. Or like, um, it's too hot, too hot, too hot, baby. Gotta run for cover, gotta run for shade. It's like one of those groups from the 70s that was struggling to, you know, keep it going in the mid to late 80s. Because they, they, they could keep 80, 81, they was in the pocket still. 82 still, 83 still, 84, uh, 85, mm -hmm. 86, it was kind of like over for them. But some of those groups were still, you know, had record deals and they had to produce music. You know, like the Whispers, you know, Cool in the Gang, you know, Gap Band, Cameo, you know. And all those groups did produce good music in that first, like, but once it got 89, even Stevie was done by 89. Now, Stevie was done. When did, um, when did the soundtrack for um, Jungle Fever come out? That was probably Stevie's last great commercial success. And even um, the OJs, they changed it to Levert. You know, they had to come back with a whole, the younger, they had to come back with the sons. They couldn't even keep it up. They said, Eddie said, man, look, y'all niggas go out there. I'm tired. My, my back hurt. This one says, this is definitely some down low gay music. He better not let Umar Johnson hear this. He would have, he would have a field day, LOL. But Umar didn't respond as we, we checked on it. Umar did respond. He responded with silence the best way. Umar just letting this thing. 
Who am I let this thing? You got to let people hang themselves, man. Give them just enough rope to hang themselves. He said, on some, Tyreek got entirely too much going on. <laughs> he said, dads are like Stevie Wood, the mink coat, too corny for my taste. <laughs> This was an RBN gay. So chicks shaking their ass in the video is gay now. I must be gay then. And this person said, up so gay ass artists been putting bitches in their videos for a long time. <laughs> oh shit. Somebody said he made this in 2018. <laughs> Crackers in his group. Crackers filmed this shit. <laughs> well, you know what? Tyreek does keep an echo chamber around him, though. I've noticed that. I watch his show, you know, from time to time. And if you don't agree with him, you are, man, you gone. Unceremoniously kicked out. So he got an echo chamber. So even if there wasn't nobody going to tell him, I, I don't know, Reek. I don't know about this one, Reed. And he said, and the reverse psychology with calling somebody a coon does not help this song, by the way. It sucks, it sucks, it sucks. It's lame, it's lame, it's lame. <laughs> Fruity ass shit. Yeah, this was, he said, say, bruh, it's going to take me a minute to process this. LOL, you got kind of a Moore's Day vibe. But I dig it. Bree and Layla looking too fine. Yeah. This is a, a Morris Day type vibe. Yeah, I can see. This would have been one of the songs Morris Day would have left off the album. Or if Morris Day had done this, it would have sounded... Of course, the production level would have been a lot better. I could have seen Morris Day doing this with better lyrics. Just the only thing he would have kept was It's Time. Even the harmony of that, you know, it's time. He to keep, you know, he could have kept all that, but I think that's the only thing he would have kept. I think he would have changed everything else. This one says it has that Montel Jordan feel. I don't know, you know, I mean, you know, Montel Jordan only had one hit, so you got to be talking about that. Um, uh, kind of buzzes all because this is how we do it. So Central does it like nobody does. This is how we do it. It's time. You do it. Yeah, I get, I, I could, yeah, 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 maybe a little bit, but still, like, I don't know. It's got a bad track. It's just weird coming from a guy who gave us Hidden Colors in 1804. Can someone tag Dr. Umar, LOL? <laughs> First says, is this garbage? Yes. With that being said, I'm amazed at the amount of quality they put into the performance in the video. It's like garbage served on a silver platter. <laughs> this is the halftime show between his Black Power lecture. <laughs> Mink Slide, are you serious? Listen, Tyreek is an old dude, man. I'm telling you, man. I would venture to say Tyreek 52, 53. I would even put Tyreek around 55 this year. If he ain't hit whatever birthday he having this year, this might be his 55th birthday. So he, Tyreek, 
is, you know, he an older cat. So, you know, it would have looked weird him doing some, like, you know, this is actually the right pocket for him because he's, he's in a dead, when you like 55, you can't come with the new shit. It, nah, that shit, you look weird doing that. I get a lot of a stand in his lane where he would have been, when would Tariq have been like 20? If he's 55 now, he would have been 20. So that would have been 35 years ago. 83. Yeah. So he'd have been 20 and 83, and that's about when this sound like he came out. 80, 83 and 87. So I'm not going to diss him on that. All right, y'all, get in the comment section, man. Tell me what y'all think. Peace.